Hello and welcome to the Insight is Capital podcast. I'm Pierre Daly, Managing Editor of AdvisorAnalyst.com. Joining me today is Jeff Braddix from Picton Mahoney Asset Management to talk about market neutral strategies and how they fit into investors' portfolios. Jeff is a portfolio manager at Picton Mahoney Asset Management, specializing in Canadian equities. Prior to joining Picton Mahoney, Jeff was vice president and senior portfolio manager at BMO Global Asset Management, where he was lead portfolio manager for Canadian large cap equity portfolios, managing over $6 billion in assets under management. Prior to that, he spent over a decade at Manulife Asset Management, joining as an analyst and progressing to managing director and portfolio manager with responsibility for Canadian equity portfolios managed with a blend of fundamental and quantitative analysis. Jeff is a CFA charter holder and has an honors B admin from the Richard Ivey School of Business at Western University. This is the Insight is Capital podcast. The views and opinions expressed in this broadcast are those of the individual guests and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of advisoranalyst.com or of our guests. This broadcast is meant to be for informational purposes only. Nothing discussed in this broadcast is intended to be considered as advice. Jeff, welcome to the show. It's great to have you. Thanks, Beric. Great to connect. So, Jeff, to kick things off, um, tell us more about Picton Mahoney Asset Management. Yeah, it's it's a great place to start. Uh, for those listening in that aren't familiar with Picton Mahoney Asset Management, we were founded over 15 years ago, and we currently manage today over around 10 billion in assets for both retail and institutional clients. We're an independent asset manager meaning we're not a subsidiary or division of a, a larger financial institution. Instead, we're hundred percent employee all and very much believe in alignment alongside our clients with senior investment professionals investing in our funds alongside clients. Uh, we'll talk today about one of our strategies, but we manage a number of strategies across equities, fixed income and multi-asset. And a common thread between them is a focus in on risk adjusted returns and also helping our clients reach their financial goals with greater certainty. Jeff, tell us about your role, uh, your background. I know I, I covered some of that and, um, but maybe you could provide some color on that and, and, uh, also why you joined Picton Mahoney Asset Management. Yep. My role is a portfolio manager on a number of the equity solutions and a number of long short strategies. I work alongside Dave Picton. What we're going to talk about today is our market neutral. As you mentioned, with my background, I've been managing equities for about 17 years. And this journey as an investor has led me through different disciplines. Uh, I've managed portfolios before that were predominantly fundamental driven. You can think of meeting with companies, industry analysis, site visits and building models to find right. profitable investments. And I've also managed portfolios over my time that are very quantitative in nature, using mathematics, statistics to find profitable investments. And what insight I've gathered as an investor is there a strength in both. And as an investor, I could build better portfolios if I combine them in a portfolio. And that's really what led me to the team at Picton Mahoney Asset Management is very much in alignment in this belief. At Picton Mahoney Asset Management on the equity solutions, we focus in on a style that's unique called fundamental change. And we also believe in leveraging both fundamental analysis and quantitative analysis to build portfolios. And we gain significant insight when you have different engines looking at companies from different vantage points. And we see a lot of power when they confirm each other. So when they both say buy, we see that significantly powerful. So that's a bit about my background, also what led me and really what differentiates Picton Mahoney Asset Management. What is the market neutral strategy and how does it work? Yeah, a great question. As I anticipate, there's people listening in that have heard this term market neutral. Maybe have an idea, not, not fully clear uh, what it is, how it's managed, and why it's important for clients' portfolios and solution. So I'll, I'll break it down. And from a, a very high level, a market neutral is an alternative solution. Now, when a lot of people hear alternatives, they think of different asset classes than traditional stocks, equities, or bonds, things like infrastructure or private equity. And those are alternatives. But what are also alternatives is how a solution is managed. And in the case of market neutral, it takes traditional equity stocks 
and manage those differently to provide a different outcome for investors. Now, the objective of our market neutral portfolio is to manage those equities to provide a positive return stream for clients, irrespective of the market direction, or for other words, neutral to the direction of equity markets. And over the 15 years we've been managed in this solution, through great financial crisis, group pandemic, that's been our objective. Now, how it works and how we build a portfolio, you can think of the portfolio in some ways, two halves. On one side, we buy companies, go along companies where we see positive fundamental change. On the other side, we short stocks and we short those companies with negative change. We bring it together within a portfolio and through risk management, what we want to ensure is that portfolio for our clients, the exposure to equity markets is close to zero or technical term beta close to zero. Now, why this matters within the portfolio context is if you can add a solution like market neutral to your equities and your fixed income, and you can add a market solution that's not correlated with either, what it can do is improve the overall quality of returns for clients. So there's some background on market neutral and how it works and also how it fits within a client's portfolio. Right. So you'd, you'd be, you'd have your base strategy, uh, which let's say it's traditional 60, 40. Um, and then, and then in order to complement that, you'd be adding market neutral to add to the overall incremental expected return over the long term, uh, irrespective of how the, the base strategy does. Correct. So w- what challenges do you think investors are facing in the current environment? Two concerns we hear from investors and our one is inflation and the surge of inflation. And the other is we've had this surge in economic growth and we're, we're now in that deceleration phase and that, that's causing some jitters in the market. So maybe I could expand on each of those in a little more detail. I'll, I'll start with inflation and it, it's something we debate at Pictimony and I'll tell you both sides have really the coin on the debate. On one side, uh, inflation is higher and here to stay higher. It really centers around the massive monetary creation and fiscal stimulus this cycle. And just to give some context for listeners, uh, it starts with monetary stimulus. As a result of the pandemic, uh, across the globe, central banks flooded the system. And essentially, they wanted to ensure that this pandemic, global pandemic, didn't turn into a global liquidity crisis like we saw in 2008. As a result, the Fed, for example, put in $6 trillion into the economy. It's a massive number, the equivalent of 30% yeah. of GDP. Also, the government stepped in with fiscal stimulus across the globe. For example, in the U.S., $5 trillion was added. And to give you just the data point, uh, in the U.S., 90% of U.S. citizens receive checks in the mail, $1,400 per individual. So yeah. stepping back and thinking the average family of two adults, two children, that's $5,600, a meaningful amount. And for the debate on those that inflation's here to stay is that that liquidity is now causing inflation in the system, equivalent to over 50% of GDP, fiscal and monetary. Also, the point too is that wages are now starting to increase. And that's really the key driver of sustained inflation is that higher prices lead to higher wages and that virtuous cycle. So that's the one side of the point. On the other side of the debate is stepping back and acknowledging that we haven't had inflation for over 25 years prior to this. And that's because there are some large deflationary tailwinds, things like demographics, right? Things like technology, Amazon that aids price discovery and deflationary force, and also globalization. And some may argue globalization's decreased after the last regime in the U.S., but it's still here. Also on the temporary side of inflation debate is that there's been a surge of goods in CPI and it's been driven by a narrow basket of goods that consumers are purchasing. For me, for example, I haven't traveled for a couple of years for leisure or been to a sporting event or concert, but like many people, if I've done a home renovation, others concentrated purchases in cars. I've heard a story of someone selling a boat for more money than they bought 15 years ago. That's, that's clearly not a sustainable trend. And 
capital will solve supply chains and there'll be more bolts produced. Yeah, the, the same thing's happening with uh, cars too, right? I mean, with with uh, foreign cars, you know, I think Audi in particular, uh, the the um, buyouts on the back ends of leases are are now fetching, you know, ten thousand, fifteen thousand dollar premiums because because of the shortage of vehicles. Yeah, we're seeing that right? clear with vehicles, and that yeah. that would feed into the argument that's temporary. Is next year right. we're going to be laughing those surged used auto prices where they were up over 30%. And as capital's deployed at supply chain, more automobiles will be produced and that's going to be a deflationary headwind. Now, as we debate it, uh, we don't see the inflation picture today derailing the equity markets. But the key debate is in next year, where is inflation? Right. As we start lapping those costs, it's still here at high. And are we starting to see that initial high wages that have brought people back to the workforce? Is it continuing the higher wages? I would say if we do have inflation bid next year, then that could challenge the equity markets. It means policymakers, the Fed, need to play catch up. Jeff, do you see any other challenges uh, that, you know, in terms of headwinds that investors are facing today? Yeah, the, the second challenge uh, that advisors and generally the market are facing is we've had this, this surge in economic growth, and now we're in this deceleration phase. And that, that's causing some jitters in the market and some volatility. And if I just back it up, the surge in economic growth is happening as we went from closed economies due to the pandemic to reopening. And we saw a massive surge. And measures like PMIs, measures of economic growth, reached 40-year highs earlier this year. And now we're on that deceleration phase. Wow. And, and that gives some volatility for investors of how far the economy falls. Now, typically when we have this kind of switch from early to mid cycle, it's usually a question on demand. Has the consumer run out of gas? I don't believe that to be the case this time. It's more driven by the supply side. On the consumer side, given that we've had massive fiscal stimulus, it means that for the first time in a recession in the U.S., consumer notional incomes actually grew during a recession. So the consumer is coming out of this recession from the pandemic in great shape. Also, business balance sheets are in great shape. So the slowdown is really driven by the supply chain. And there's a multitude of reasons on the supply side. One goes back to a year and a half ago in March. Many factories were forced to shut due to the pandemic for, for safety of their employees, or also maybe just uncertainty of demand to buy a record for. Demand has surged back, and it's, it meant that inventories to sales are at 40-year low. So we're seeing that slowdown today. Uh, driven by supply, but it also means that we have a nice tailwind to the economy in rebuilding inventories. Rebuilding the supply chains will be a nice tailwind in rebuilding the inventory cycle. So that's one concern, and I think that's causing some volatility in the market. You might not see it on the headline index level, but below the index level, there's been a lot of volatility this year. Uh, 60% of Canadian and U.S. companies have corrected 10%. And one right. third of TXX companies corrected 20%. So, so that's a lot of volatility out there. You've probably heard the term uh, Mr. Market before, uh, right. coined by Benjamin Graham, and of that irrational behavior of the market going from fear to greed. And as we transition through this period, we could probably see more volatility as the market, some days are fear, we're declining, going through deceleration right. to greed. In, in the case of our solution, uh, we take out that Mr. Market in the noise for investors to try to produce a return with much less volatility. I had an interesting conversation with uh, another uh, uh, PM CIO, and, and one of the points he made that was really interesting in that is that when we had, while we had, in terms of the equity market, while we had a scarcity of growth last year because of the collapse in the economy, growth stocks, which are high duration uh, in nature performed ex exceptionally well, as we know in hindsight now. Um, but then in the face of recovery of the reopening trade that happened in the fall with the election and then subsequently the vaccine news, the reopening trade reignited value stocks, for example. And, and so it's interesting to see, you know, how, how an inflationary outlook could be 
uh, one that leads to higher interest rates potentially uh, over the next couple of years and how that, how that plays between value and growth or value and momentum uh, stocks. And, and so there's, there's, there seems to be uh, this incipient shift in the regime of the market and, and, and what happens next and, and how that affects stocks. But that's probably the nice thing about the market neutral strategy that we're talking about today is that it, 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 it um, performs in a way that's very different than, than the general outlook for, for either growth stocks or value stocks. Great point you make too, and also with the change in regimes and potentially if inflation does persist, what that means for portfolios. Uh, right. And I would agree, uh, when, I, when we look at portfolios out there, um, we think there's a lot more rate risk in portfolios than maybe clients perceive. And what I mean by, for example, is a portfolio that may feel diversified on the surface, maybe a client's portfolio that's invested in bonds, dividend stocks, and then their favorite tech stocks may feel very diversified, but there's a large interest rate risk there across those three components. And if we do have higher inflation, it is persistent. That could be a challenge for investors because that unintended interest rate risk in portfolios. Uh, turning to our portfolio, as you mentioned, uh, yeah. we're neutral to the market, but within our positioning today, we also do have a positive tilt towards commodities. And commodities okay. historically have been nice diversifiers in inflationary environments. And one, one, one commodity we really like is copper. Not only is it a, it's a nice hedge for us in our portfolio, but the cyclical outlook for copper is aligned and there's some nice secular uh, kickers there. And just to elaborate, it's kind of followed the boom and bust cycle copper. And if I go back to the early 2000s, uh, China came into the world. Uh, Copper companies started raising capital and they started building mines. It usually takes five to seven years to build a copper mine. And they built these mines and they came on right at the wrong time. 2008, 9, 10, right as the financial prices hit. As you can imagine, they, they flooded the market with capacity. And for the last decade, copper companies have been starved for capital and haven't built mines. Meanwhile, demand's coming back. And then copper also has that secular story of decarbonization. Uh, things like wind that's massively copper intensive and things like electric vehicles where an electric vehicle is four times copper intensive than an ICE car, an internal combustion right. engine. So I think in portfolio instruction to your comments also, it's for to have diversifiers in a portfolio to prepare you for those environments. And if inflation persists, having something in your portfolio that will act differently to protect it, protect your portfolio. Yeah, I, just to add to your point about copper and, and uh, electric vehicles, um, I think the, the uh, last number that I read was that it takes 56 pounds of copper for one electrical vehicle. Yeah, it's, it's four times as so, intensive. And then we also yeah. have to build that grid to, to power the cars, whether they're at full, where they're charging stations. Right. So a massive long-term demand driver for copper. So, Jeff, where does market neutral fit in investor portfolios? Great question. Where we're seeing our clients use market neutral, there's a couple specific areas. One is for clients with too much cash. Maybe they've had cash come in the last two years, at concern with the pandemic or concern with valuations. And they're looking to deploy that cash to get a return, but they don't want to add equity risk to their portfolio. So they're looking to market neutral to get a pause return, but not add to equity market risk. The second area we're seeing clients use market neutral as a solution is an alternative for fixed income. Uh, this is a low rate environment. It's challenged for fixed income. So they're looking to market neutral to get a return, but not add rate exposure to the portfolio. And I would say kind of the last area is we're finding more and more clients stepping back looking at their portfolio, and in many cases, looking at the traditional investments, maybe 60, 40, or along that lines. And while it served out extremely well in the past, maybe challenge going for Challenge to get returns, also challenge to be diversified. And they're stepping back, looking at those building blocks, seeing if they have the right building blocks, and looking to market neutral as an alternative to add to their building blocks to build better portfolios. 
Where can investors learn more about the market neutral strategy and Picton Mahoney Asset Management? Yeah, for more information on Picton Mahoney Asset Management and our strategies, you can refer to our website at pictonmahoney.com or reach out to one of our sales consultants for more information. Jeff, thank you so much for your incredibly valuable time and insight. Thanks, Barry. Great to connect with you.